I'd like you to look at the geometry of the bridge that Jen did. If you would uh, imagine that this bridge is made of straws, pipes, let's say, pipes. Let's say it's all pipes. And we turned that bridge up on its side, rotated at 90 degrees. And if we poured water into those pipes, every time that that water came to a joint, it would do something. One, some of that water would go this way, some would go that way. Maybe some of it would go here and then go back up that way. So you could, basically, you could chart the flow of that water through those pipes. You can also chart the stresses through that structure the same way. One of the things, one of the small tips that you can do is when you get to what I would call a kink, like this corner here or this corner over here, that kink introduces stress. That water, imagine that water coming down and running into that kink in that pipe. If we adjusted that, Jen, if you would, use the select tool and click on that member, click, actually click in the middle, and let's start rounding those corners off a little bit. So make them smooth. So you can gain efficiency with geometry. Do both sides. What she's doing is she's selecting the joint and using the arrow keys to, to go down with that. You can move any one of those joints. Now you could make that as smooth as you want. You could raise them all up a little bit, get, but the smoother the better. So the bottom line is if you're a bridge designer, you don't want to be kinky, right? You want, you want smooth corners, no kinks, no kinks. All right. Once you've adjusted your geometry a little bit, then you can go back into the iterative process that we just spent 45 minutes learning, right? We start resizing. We, we know we're still probably going to be okay with solid bars and hollow tubes, but we should check. Sometimes we change a few things. We can take a member from compression to tension. Uh, later, a little later on, some of the more advanced designs you'll see, you can actually force a member to be compression or to be tension just with the geometry. Some of the members here, most of these members are nearly the same size. Jen, if, you, if you'll go to the size part there and click there, you click, click on size. We can also sort that in ascending or descending order. So click it again. You can see the, the longest member we have is 180 millimeters, and the shortest is 55. So one of the things we could do is look at those short members, see if they're compression members, or more applicable, Check the tension members to see if the long ones are tension members. If the long ones are tension members, you may want to consider actually adding a joint. Sometimes two members doing the same work, you can build redundancy into your design. Sometimes two members, much smaller, can, do, can be more efficient than one member that's larger. That's also true the other way as well, so you can keep that in mind. We have went from 300,000 down to 284,000 with 34 iterations, 34 iterations. It's taken us less than an hour to do that, but we're learning the process. In another 30 minutes, we could very easily have this bridge competitive, this particular design competitive for the statewide contest as well as the nationals. 